Greetings, teachers. It's November 10th, 2023. I'm addressing myself to striking teachers in this memo. I saw this fun picture of 7 times 10 equals 70. And that's not the picture we normally draw because I'm not using a right angle. I'm using a 60 degree angle. So it's a equilateral triangle with a total of 100 little triangles. And by going out 7 and 10 along two edges that meet at the bottom here, 60 degree angle, I close the lid and I get a green area of 7 times 10 or 70 of these unit triangles are covered. And at the bottom of this same mem memo, I'm trying to encompass the little paradigm shift that you would talk about would you find this, should you find this an interesting lesson plan? We're trying to attribute to one of the U.S.'s greatest futurists, someone a lot of sort of eggs went into that basket as far as telling the world that we had a promising vision here in this country of how the world could go. And they're like, oh, you mean like the Bucky Fuller stuff? And they're like, yeah. Check out the pavilion, Mont, Mont, uh, Montreal, 67, geodesics. But little known is that he also has this alternative approach to, we could say, second and third powering, or we could say multiplication, whatever. And here at the bottom of the memo, it's 2 by 2 by 5. Get, close the lid on that, and you get 20. Volume 20, but 20 what? Not 20 cubes, but 20 unit volume tetrahedrons. Total number of, total volume here is 125 unit volume tetrahedrons. Now this skeletal shape, which we call the IVM, or isotropic vector matrix, does not consist fully only of equilateral tetrahedrons. It consists of octahedrons as well. And they have volume 4 vis-a-vis -vis the tetrahedron of volume 1. But nevertheless, closing the lid on 2 by 2 by 5, and you get a total tetra volume, we could say, of 20. Closing the lid, just like we did in the two-dimensional case or the flat case. If we want to call it two-dimensional, we're certainly free to, even though the uh, pixels, the voxels, do have some little depth to them. So there's Margaret Fuller, and she works with Emerson Thoreau back in the day when Harvard is kind of full of new ideas, new approaches to the Bible. Basically, German idealism coming through Hegel and so on is transforming U.S. academia. And this is before Bucky Fuller's time, but when he gets to Harvard, he goes and reads Margaret Fuller. He kind of puts the picture together to some degree studies more humanities than you probably think because his reputation Bucky's is kind of a stem guy it's more of a architect engineer people think but I would say actually he's more on the humanities side that's kind of my approach is to treat him more with the poets and so forth so I'll end on that with my graph theory I'll go through some of these slides quickly the Babbage, Ada Byron slide, Sam Hill. We'll kind of skip that, but there's Margaret Fuller again on the right. Emerson in the middle. Nietzsche, a later admirer of Emerson, lived after him on the left. I'll come back to this slide in another show. That's Bucky Fuller and Sam Lanahan. My yearbook picture. I'll just say that Sam and Bucky were in the Philippines around the time that I was a high schooler in the Philippines as well. The Fitzgeralds, uh, F. Scott and Zelda, are Sam's grandparents. Applewhite with his friend Angleton. There's Ezra Pound, Yale. Lots to go on here. But the slide I wanted to reach was... think this one. So this is me being influenced by 
Wittgenstein at Princeton, who was also an influence on Richard Rorty, this man um, on the far left here, who's a follower of John Dewey, and goes back in his book, Achieving Our Country, through Walt Whitman to the transcendentalists. He's basically sketching out for us a trajectory uh, through American history that you could call left, but isn't necessarily all that much informed by Marxism, right? So it's a little bit different narrative, and he doesn't explicitly mention Bucky Fuller or anything, but Rorty was my professor at Princeton, and I think taking Wittgenstein and Rorty's influence together, combining that with Buckminster Fuller, you kind of get where I'm coming from when I put together my slideshows and give my presentations. And this is, as I'm saying, bringing Bucky more into the humanities and not just leaving him out there with the what I call STEMites. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Certainly Fuller has a big role to play in that area, but he's also a literary figure and a philosophy figure in American history. And I helped tie it all together uh, in this slideshow, which will continue to be changing. This is a malleable one, unlike my other slideshow that I talk about a lot, which is more set in stone. But there's that same idea about multiplication in two and three dimensions, or in Fuller's world, it's all four dimensions because everything has an inside, everything has volume, everything takes up space. So why not just start with the tetrahedron and call everything 4D? But that's just a different namespace, right? We go over that. And as a math teacher at the college level, at the high school level, even at the elementary school level, you're free to remind people that language kind of breaks up into namespaces, different contexts, where words can take on different meaning depending on the context. So like here's my slide on the three meanings of 4D that I like to talk about and how, you know, it doesn't bring math to a grinding halt that we have multiple namespaces. On the contrary, they learn from each other and feed off each other, find relationships. So maths, maths with an S on the end is plural. It's not a monolithic unistructure so much as a space of exploration. So back to talking to the math teachers, this will help your students stay flexible mentally because, hey, look, there's another picture of geometry, another picture of multiplication that you got early in your career and kids in my generation did not. So this, I hope, will keep the newer kids from getting less bogged down in sort of the uni paradigm, the way a lot of us are oldsters. We're kind of stuck in a rut. I have to warn you, you're going to find that out if you're young. Don't forget to question authority. Talk to you later.